I am going to show you how to create a candle in the window stitch, or it's also been called a wing stitch. So here it is here. You could see, well, this is upside down, but there's the candle. There's the window above it. So I've showed it in previous videos, but I want to do start to finish. So say you start a basket with just a simple stitch. The way I've created the candle and the window stitch is by doing a pops, popcorn stitch for one row and then coming back on the following row and doing a diamond stitch above it. That's the best way I could figure it out. So you go through your stitch once. So even if this is just one stitch, you go through once, kind of leans to the right. You go through it again and it comes straight up. Now the candle in the window stitch I've seen has one stitch here. I like to do two because it's easier for me to figure out where I'm at. Okay, so I do two, then you go to the next stitch. You add one that's gonna lean to the right. Then you're gonna add another one straight down. And try not to tangle your thread. So that's kind of like a V stitch. If you just want to leave it that way, you could, but I'm putting a second stitch in. I like two candles in my window. See, there's two stitches that end straight up and down, and this one leans to the right. I'll do one more. So it's basically like a V-stitch. Gosh, I hope I'm not shaking my phone too much. So this one's going to kind of lean to the right. I'm not adding needles because I just want to keep going here, but I'll go back and add needles. Straight down. Straight down, straight down. Then I'm gonna add a second candle because I like that look. And you can choose to do it whichever way you can. Or whichever way you like. Or maybe can. So. That's what it's looking like. I'll go all the way around and then I'll show you what we do next, which will be a back stitch. So this is what I am trying to create right here. I've already done one row, but I didn't videotape the whole thing. So I'm trying to create this stitch all the way around candle in the window or chicken foot, someone called it. Um, or wing. Anyway, my friend showed it to me. I couldn't find much information on it, so I had to figure it out myself. But this is what I consider a candle in the window, and I have two stitches there, which is two candles. So I'll go all the way around, prepping up for the candle in the window, and it's basically going to be a popcorn stitch all the way around, but I'll show you before I turn around and start going the other way. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. We are working on setting up for the candle in the window stitch. So here is the stitch in uh, two previous rows on the basket. Now I'm setting up for the next row, the next set of it. So. In my last video, I've showed you how to come across and do a regular stitch. Just go in through the X, two candle sticks in the window as opposed to one. 
Now we're gonna back stitch across it. And back stitch, you're just going to cross over this thread here and go right back down where you have the double stitches. Or if you have a single stitch, right back under that. So there. So this is called a popcorn stitch. Once you've gone back around and completed the row, it's creating a row of popcorn stitches. And then above that, we're gonna go back and put another row and put this top of the diamond stitch. So again, I'll show you, just pull up, go over this crossover, go right under the two candlesticks, or maybe in your case, you're doing just one candlestick. I'm doing two because I like the look. So you're gonna have X's up on top, and you'll see in the next part of this video, you will be stitching through those. So if you look right here, in this area, that's a popcorn stitch right between there. So we're gonna do a popcorn stitch all the way around, and then the next row, we're gonna do the upper half of a diamond stitch and it will end up looking like this. And that's a candle in the window. And remember that I have double candles in my window just because I like it that way. Okay, hope that makes sense. I'll continue on and show you when I get around to the other edge and what we're gonna do next. Okay, I've completed the entire row of the popcorn stitch, setting up for the candle in the window stitch. And we are back at the beginning here. So see how this stitch looks? That is the popcorn stitch. I guess this is supposed to be the popcorn popping up. However, it's the bottom half of the candle in the window. Now we're gonna go on to the next row and we're gonna set up the top of the diamond stitch, which makes it the candle in the window. So here we go, we're back at the beginning. And all you do for this row is a simple stitch and you go through the crossovers. So remember we did a back stitch over the V stitch and now we're just taking a simple stitch through the crossovers that we created by doing the back stitch on the previous row. So see there's the simple stitch starting up. It's just the basic stitch and you're just going through the crossovers. So what's gonna happen is we'll go all the way around with the simple stitch, then we'll reverse it and do another back stitch. Now, when you do the back stitch, you're gonna end up going through this same hole over here. You have another cross on top, but do you see how that creates another row of candle in the window or wing stitch or whatever you wanna call it? And then we'll go through here. And that's, you do the back stitch that way. Straighten out your crosses. And you have a few more candle in the windows. So here they are down here here, here, we're gonna have a row up here of candle in the window. So I'm gonna go all the way around, stop, 
reverse it and do the back stitch. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Thanks for watching. Okay, we are getting closer and closer to completing candle in the window. So earlier we did the popcorn stitch. Then when we got to the end, we went through and created just a regular stitch. Now we are going to back stitch over that and cre uh, create the diamond stitch, which will create the window for the candle in the window. And you do that by just crossing over Turn your work around because you're going to go the opposite way. You're doing a backwards stitch. You're going backwards. I'm going to go right down in here. We're trying to create the cross over. Go back down in the same stitch. And can you see? where we're creating the window right here. Now remember my candles have two candlesticks in them. I'll go to another one. Gosh, I hope you could see with that light. Just go right back down in. And we're doing the same thing we did on the rows, the lower rows. Wrong one, over here. It's late and I'm not paying attention. Might help if I cross it over so I could see. Right down between those two stitches. So it anchors it. So we're just doing the backward stitch. You're just going back over anchoring in the same holes. You're going to end up with the X on top again. And if you want, you can keep going, making your basket bigger and bigger. Oops, sorry, I banged my phone. There we go. Crossing over, I'll do one more on camera. Hard to get at this angle, but I want you to be able to see it really well. There we go. So here's our little windows. I'll just keep going all the way around and complete it. And then I will decide whether I want to just finish off that way or maybe wrap a row. I might wrap a row to close it off. So there you have your candle in the window stitch. I'll put a picture right at the end. Here's your windows, here's your candles. And it's created by doing a popcorn stitch, then a regular stitch, then you turn it around and go backwards and it creates the diamond at the top. So down in here, I practiced doing the diamond stitch so I could figure out how to do this. And that's how we figured it all out. So here's a popcorn stitch here, and this is creating the candle in the window here. Here's a popcorn stitch here. As we get back over, we're gonna have all the half diamonds at the top, and we're gonna have several candles in the window. I will post a picture of the completed basket when it's done. Thanks for watching. I hope this all makes sense. There's an idea of what it looks like on that side. It's a lot of stitches, but I've learned several stitches in here. Diamond stitch, 
candle in the window stitch and the back stitch, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching. Well, here we go. I am all done with two rows of the candle in the window stitch. I did this stitch for a friend of mine. Here we go. Here's a window with a candle. Here's another window with a candle. And it's basically the popcorn stitch here and a half a diamond stitch here. That's the way I figured it out. So here's what it looks like on the inside. We have two rows of the candle and the window stitch. Now on the bottom, I did the diamond stitch. It started out small diamonds and got bigger as they went up. Then at the very bottom first row, I just did a basic stitch and started in with the popcorn stitch. And then a half diamond, popcorn stitch, half diamond, and it creates a window effect with a candle in it. Now my candles have two threads. Some of the ones that I've seen online, the baskets that I've seen online have one thread. I like the double thread, it shows up a little bit better. But it came out very cute, I like it. I've learned three different stitches during this process. Um, it's all done now, except for I decided I'm gonna wrap the last row. I could leave it with just this back stitching. I see a lot of people do that, but I think I'm gonna do a solid row of wrapping to pop the center. That's a lot of stitches for one little basket. It's probably one of the smallest baskets I've made. Thanks for watching, and I will post a picture online of it completed with the wrapped row on top. I hope this makes sense. Have fun trying to do this stitch. I think I'll use it in a few more baskets in the future. It's a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun also. Thanks for watching.